Just one year after announcing her diagnosis, tennis legend Chris Everett says that she is cancer-free after undergoing chemotherapy and a preventative double mastectomy. She's encouraging others now to take control of their health. Janae Norman has her story. Tennis great Chris Everett revealing she underwent a preventative double mastectomy after completing her treatment for stage one ovarian cancer. A month ago, I had um, a double mastectomy after a lot of thinking about it, consideration, but I wanted to give myself the best chance possible because there's a 75% chance of getting cancer when you have the BRCA, the BRCA positive gene. The 18-time Grand Slam champion appearing on ESPN2, opening up about the events that led to her decision. A year ago, I started the journey. Um, I tested positive for the BRCA gene. My sister Jeannie had passed away from it, and I had hysterectomy and had chemotherapy, but I knew there was going to be a part B um, because you're also at high risk of breast cancer when you do have the BRCA gene when, it, when you are positive for it. Everett also writing in a deeply personal essay for ESPN, I had two choices. I could monitor my health closely with annual mammograms, MRIs, and ultrasounds, or I could have another surgery to lessen my risk. The chance of getting breast cancer if you have an abnormal BRC1 or BRCA2 is actually quite high. So many of these people elect to have what's called uh, risk-reducing surgery. You can still get breast cancer even if you have bilateral mastectomies, but the chances are much, much lower. Everett says the decision for surgery is not one to be taken lightly. When it comes to deciding between surveillance or surgery, everyone's choice is personal, adding, trust your gut, know your family history, learn about genetic testing, and be your own advocate. And Everett writes that of the 25 million women and men worldwide who have a BRCA mutation, only 10% know that they are carriers. And she says when she talks to people about genetic testing, so many people say it's too scary to know, but she doesn't mince words. She says she is here to tell you it's scarier not to. Kira. And I am with her, Janae. Joining us now to talk more about this is Dr. Darian Sutton. And let's talk about the BRCA gene and ovarian cancer. My grandmother died from ovarian cancer, and so I definitely wanted to get tested. I wanted to know what my future could look like. So just take a, take a deeper dive, Dr. Sutton, because people might now might be a little confused on whether it's the right thing to do or not. Well, good afternoon, Kira. I'm so excited to hear about this story from Chris Everett because I think it's incredibly uh, crucial. It's uh, important and it starts conversations and saves lives. As you said, I think that there's more benefit in knowing rather than not knowing. So far, what we understand about this case is that she has this history of ovarian cancer, which was removed. Subsequently, she was treated with chemotherapy. That substantially reduced her risk of recurrence of the ovarian cancer. And now she's decided, due to her genetic testing being positive for this BRCA mutation, that she's going to get a double mastectomy, which appropriately stated in this piece, is one of the options for those who are higher risk. Yeah, and that's important because it can be hereditary ovarian cancer, which is why you should definitely uh, think about, you know, doing this and, and just having an insight into your future. Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, uh, the risk of developing it is high if you have a parent that carries the gene. If you have a mother or father that carries the mutation in this BRCA or breast cancer genetic uh, mutation, it increases your chances approximately 50%. And for the individual, if you test positive for the BRCA mutation, your individual risk of developing breast cancer can increase to approximately 45 to 85%, which is a lot higher than the general public. Uh, for example, a woman's general average risk of developing breast breast cancer is approximately 12%. And this mutation also substantially increases the risk of developing ovarian cancer, as we've heard from Chris Everett, to approximately 10 to 45%. And that's also substantially higher. The risk of ovarian cancer, as I know that you know, is extremely rare, less than 1%, but so important to acknowledge because unfortunately for many, uh, ovarian cancer has no symptoms at all. Right, and this is, I mean, this was all led to why Chris Everett, uh, you know, was motivated to get a double mastectomy. Yeah, and, and many people are motivated to do this. And as said, I think it's important to acknowledge it's one of the many ways that we can do surveillance. And again, it's a personal, particular decision based on your personal and family history risk. A double mastectomy removes the breast tissue and can reduce the risk of developing breast cancer by approximately 90%. But the studies, unfortunately, aren't exactly clear for the general public, which is why, as physicians, we offer options. Other than mastectomies, you can also option for uh, certain types of surveillance, like breast imaging. And 
including MRIs, mammograms, and ultrasounds, and clinical breast exams, and making sure that you do that regularly so that if, in fact, you do catch it, you catch it early and get treatment. And, and let's talk about just before I let you go, because back when my grandmother passed from ovarian cancer, there were no signs. You couldn't, you couldn't, if you got it, you, you know, unfortunately, um, you didn't, you didn't make it. So has that changed at all? Are we able to, to, are there signs now? Is there any way that we can be better at trying to te detect ovarian cancer? Because it's still one of those tough cancers to beat. Uh, you know, I empathize with that. I also have family members and loved ones who have passed from ovarian cancer. Unfortunately, today, we still do not yet have a great screening test. Ovarian cancer is, is quite difficult because it's indolent, it's rare, and again, it often presents with no symptoms or no symptoms at all. It's really important that if you have a personal history of any type of cancer or family history of this specific type of cancer, that you do the work and get the, the information that you need ahead of time. Genetic counseling, having conversations with your providers, sometimes that can, uh, knowing your family history, history can make you indicated for more screening earlier. Uh, generally, it's recommended, for example, that women who have a history of breast cancer get their screenings earlier if they have a strong family history of that, especially if you test positive for this BRCA gene. They're recommending screening as early as the age of 25. And as far as ovarian cancer, unfortunately, again, we don't yet have a good screening modality. So it's simply important to understand your individual, your family risk, and then if needed, there are additional ultrasounds and imaging that can be done to help identify early ovarian cancer. Such great advice personal for both of us. Dr. Darian Sutton, thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.